Well, he doesn't. He hasn't seen your car, so I'm looking at you. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get a look at Mark Gregorich, who's been helping Oral out. <laughs> Tough spot for Andy here. Feels a lot like Oral's made a straight or a flush or a pair of tens. And Andy folds the hand. Oral takes down the pot. Well, not exactly textbook play, but it works out for Hershiser. And those are the kind of moves that have both helped and hurt the celebrities in the field. The 2008 tournament did not start out well for the celebs. Don Cheadle lost, and so did Jason Alexander. Jennifer Tilly was defeated. Shannon Elizabeth couldn't repeat last year's success. But Oral Hershiser has picked up the slack, winning three in a row to get to the quarters, beating some high-quality opponents. All right. You know, it seems like every year one celebrity makes a run. What makes him so successful? I think the unpredictability of celebrity play. These pros are accustomed to a certain approach to the game of poker that they're not sure the celebrities are privy to. Now, a player like Jennifer Tilly has kind of graduated into the poker player realm, but a guy like Oral Hershiser is completely foreign to this field. Suited 10-7 for Oral. Here he calls. Check it. 4-3, and Andy will check. Flops 10 deuce 4. Both players flop a pair. Top pair for Oral. Middle pair for Andy. And he's checking, allowing Oral's aggressive approach to the game to play right into Andy's strategy, although he's behind right now in this hand. Andy calls the 4,000. Turns Andy a jack of spades. Oral's hand improves. He's got a flush draw now to go with his 10s. And you saw him look up and to the left there briefly. I wonder if Andy's paying attention. Oral bets 12,000. I'm almost giving the same thing. I'm going to laugh because I'm nervous either. If I'm bluffing, <laughs> I'm nervous. And if I got a hand, I'm nervous. So either way, I'm nervous. And look at this, Matt. Oral's 14, starting to talk. That can't 12, be good 000. for him. <laughs> I think. <clears throat> I don't know. He knows exactly. Oh, I, think I know round numbers. Do you know. round up or down? And he folds his hand. I almost think there's a method to Hershiser's uh, talking at the table. Is it really nerves, or is he putting up a pretty good front? Well, Andy's not going to know for sure until he looks him up. Caesar's Palace always brings the best of the best to Las Vegas. One of its most recent additions is Color, a salon by Michael Boychuk. As guests enter the doors of color, they will be welcomed into a sophisticated world of glistening chandeliers, Fendi armoire styling stations, sweeping curtains, and indulgent accents. The vanity room treats visitors like royalty with three makeup thrones for applications, lessons, and retail purchases. So next time you're in Vegas and you want to get spoiled and pampered, be sure to stop by color. Hands down, the most luxurious salon experience on the Strip. Uh, that's great, Leanne. Some of us wouldn't know. We've been in the poker room the whole time we've been here. Yeah, no kidding. Isn't that the life? <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> Rejoining Oral Hershiser and Andy Block. You know, you don't have a master of them. So you worry about them because you are you have knowledge but no wisdom. Right. You know, no experience there to base it on. So you go, and you're building it as a player. You're not. I'm not sure if you know, Oral's talking baseball or poker. On and you go, oh, okay, I get it now. I think he's been reading too many fortune no, cookies lately. <laughs> 9-8 for Hershiser. Yeah. We're at 3,000, so I'll make it uh, 7. And he's going to raise. Oral dug himself into a huge hole early in this match, losing 70 of his original 160,000 in chips. <laughs> Oral raised to 7,000. Andy suited Jack 5, he calls. Be nice if I get on you about your He lost those chips by playing very aggressively. 14. Flop is 9, Jack. Jack, look at this flop. A pair of 9s for Oral, but trip Jacks for Andy. And this could spell trouble. Andy has checked Oral bets out 14,000. I'll show you the bluff this time. A look at this. Oral starting to get chatty again. That is not in his best interest. <laughs> you don't want to see it. You're Andy like, okay, calls. We'll see it at the end anyway. And this is becoming a big pot here. Andy slow playing his trip jacks. Turns a king of clubs. Andy has checked over to Oral, who checks. Rivers a six of spades. Unlike earlier in the very first hand of the match, Oral has checked the turn here. Now he's got a big decision on his hands. 20,000 to call. But you bet uh, last time, times two plus one was in the pot before. So. Yeah. 62,000 out there. Yeah. Bumping to me now, maybe. 
Tough to imagine Andy Block is value betting on the end here with anything less than a jack or a king. Oral makes the call. Andy takes down the pot. You knew I had something. I didn't know what you had, but I mean, I got I got a bet there, obviously. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I could check and let you bet. That might, have, that might have been a good idea. You might have bet more. I doubt it. I mean, you're probably going to check. You're probably going to check. Hard to blame Oral for making the call, but Andy extends his lead as we take you back to another quarterfinal matchup. Blind still relatively low at 1,500 and 3,000, but Huck Seed is facing a 3 to 2 chip deficit. Oh, I'm not sure. David Benjamin suited sure for Deuce. He calls. I'm not sure. Huck checks with ace nine. I mean, I, I, I can't. And enjoy David is flop bottom pair, 10 4 king. And, um, Two quick checks to the turn, Jack of Spades. Huck is content to continue playing passively against the very aggressive David Benjamin. He's calling with ace high on the turn here. And the river's a queen of diamonds. Huck now has Broadway. That's the absolute nuts on this board. Yeah. I think he has a queen. Huck bet 4,000 and Benjamin folds the hand. Pair of four is just not going to cut it in that spot. A queen? You can't beat the queen, so. No. I guess I bet the right amount, though, didn't I? <laughs> I had a four. I can't bet less than that. I guess I could have bet three. Ben, you mean still with a slight chip advantage here, and courtesy of the Vantage Heads Up Pocket Cam, Queen Jack for Huck. He calls. More passive play from Huck. Queen Jack offsuit is worthy of a raise typically, but he's content to limp in, and we see Benjamin once again putting the pressure on Huck with the pre-flop raise. Huck calls the additional 6,000, and the flop trip queens for Huck. Queen, six, queen. And David leads out with 9,000. Just too tempting when you're the pre-flop raiser with control of the pot on a paired board not to bet. Tough to like your hand if you're David now that Huck has called the flop. Turn pair sixes on the board. Queens up with a king kicker now for David. Check. Check. David is checked. David checks. 9,000. Huck bets 9,000. Now David's got to decide whether or not Huck wasn't just peeling a card off to try to take this pot off of him on the turn. And apparently he's decided that that's exactly what Huck was doing. So David calls and the river's a ten of hearts. David's calling with King High here. He doesn't think that Huck limped in with an ace pre-flop. He thinks his hand might be good. So David checks and now it's Huck betting out and firing 50,000 into the pot. Well, David may have thought King High was good, but not 50,000 good. Benjamin folds, and that's two in a row for Huck. And just like that, he's right back to even. The mild-mannered Huck seed is turning up the heat in Vegas. Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship at Caesars Palace. Well, you might not be able to guess by the way Huck acts, but inside, this is a true gambler at heart. Do all that me, I couldn't run a 430 mile, and I trained pretty hard and ran a 438. I lost. Ted Forrest and I had to run 26 miles around the UNLV track in the summer. It was 120 degrees. I, at the time, also had a crazy bet where I was playing eight hours of tennis every day. I had to do it for a month. Me and Phil Helmuth, we used to make hundreds of bets. We made a bet. I had to float in the ocean for 24 hours. The whole reason I even played golf, I was a chip and dole, offered me a 100,000 bet on breaking 90 in a year. That was pretty easy. Wait a minute, let's go back to the floating in the ocean for 24 hours. I'll take that action. I'd need water wings. <laughs> in fact, wait a minute, I want action that that bet never even took place because there's no way he would have tried to float for a full day in the ocean. They're more quiet than us, yeah. Yeah, that's tough to believe. That smells like shark chum at hour 20. Oh, he might be laying some chum in the water here. Pocket aces for Huck, he's called. Benjamin with 10-4, he checks. And there's no reason for David to think Huck is any stronger or weaker than he typically has been. He's been limping all match long. David has paired his four on the flop, he checks. And Huck checks. Huck trying to set the trap here. 
wants to allow David to think that he can bluff this pot. That's 6,000. Or perhaps that if he's hit the flop, his hand is good. Three to a straight on the board, and David bets out 6,000. Puck quickly calls. And the river, deuce of clubs. That's an action-freezing card right there. Four to a straight on the board. A five would give either player the six high straight, so David is checked. 9,000. Now Huck bets 9,000. Now David's going to try to decide what it is that Huck would have checked on the flop with and then called his bet on the turn with. Cool. Well, David calls, and Huck takes down the pot.